Hey everybody, it's Matt with Everywhere Auto Repair. Today what we're going to be talking about is how much should you charge as a mobile mechanic. Now, as a mobile mechanic, I make my money primarily in three different ways. Through labor charges, I make money off the parts, and I charge trip fees depending on how far away the customer is. I feel like if you're looking this up that you're probably just starting or getting ready to start your mobile mechanic business. So let's 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 talk about how much should you charge when you're just starting out. Uh, I'm gonna say just in general, 75 to 100 per hour, and we're talking flat rate. So if it says, well, we'll get into that later. Maybe less depending on how desperate you are. Like if you if you really need money right now to pay the bills or to put food on the table, maybe do some jobs really cheap. Um, you know, some break jobs for less than less than what you would normally charge. Um, once you get, oh yeah, so once you get under fifty dollars an hour. Once you're charging less than $50 an hour flat rate, you're basically competing with drug addicts. You're, you're competing with people that are desperate, okay? So de desperation stinks. You don't want to be desperate, all right? If you are desperate, you know, I feel for you. I hope you get over that. Uh, get some food in your belly and then start charging normal wages or normal normal flat rate prices is what I should say. Uh, if you live in like California or New York, I would say that uh, uh, I, would, I wouldn't even start that low. I would start out at like 125 an hour and maybe even higher. Um, if you live in like a really low income or a low population area, like out in the middle of nowhere, $50 an hour flat rate, that might not be so crazy, you know, especially when you might calculate your trips a little bit different because you have to drive really far to get to the customer. If you're <clears throat> if you're an established mechanic, like if you just have a lot of phone calls coming in, I would say you should probably charge like 150 an hour. And if you're in California and you have just tons of phone calls, tons of work, $200 an hour because uh, everything's more expensive in California and New York, um, so that's why I'm using these as examples. <sighs> like they just they just tax they tax you out of all your profit, so you just have to charge more. And then if you live in a low income, a low income, low population area, you know, hundred dollars an hour is probably probably pretty good. All right, now let's talk about how I decide what to charge the customer for parts. First off, I buy the parts through a commercial account, wholesale, uh, I get them as cheap as I can, and then I sell them for retail. Uh, so that way the customer can't, they can't go and get the part any cheaper themselves. And I don't install customer parts. Like if a customer buys, for example, that if you watched, if you saw, I just posted a video about doing a, a brake booster and a master cylinder on a uh, Chevy Colorado, and that that master cylinder or that brake booster was faulty because it had the bolts in the wrong place to put the master cylinder. Well, let's say there are two ways that scenario could have gone down. The first way is the customer bought that part. Well, now, now I've just done all this work. And the job's gonna have to be done twice. Okay, there's no there's no getting around it. The job has to be done twice. And because it's an easy enough job, you're gonna get pushed into doing it for free. Okay, let's just be honest. If you if you look at how easy that job was, and there's just no getting around it, you would have ended up doing it twice. And because because it would have it would not have been worth the hassle of trying to trying to convince the customer to pay twice if they didn't want to. So that's what happened. That's the kind of predicament you get yourself in 
if the customer buys the parts. And I've been in those types of those types of situations before, not too many times because I kind of I have a better way because I'm the one buying the parts. If the part is faulty, like it was with that brake booster, AutoZone will pay for the job to be done the second time because they, with a commercial account, they not only cover the part with their warranty, they cover the labor for replacing the part. So that's huge. Okay, if, if, if I can make money off the part and, and protect my customer at the same time, that's great. And also, uh, let's say a week later, something goes wrong. Let's say the customer calls me right now and says, hey, this is wrong, that's wrong. You know, I, I go and I look at the truck and I figure out, oh wow, the master, cil the master cylinder is bad already. Well, guess what? AutoZone will pay for me to do the master cylinder again. And I don't know if a lot of people know this because before I was a mechanic, I never, I, I mean, it's so easy for anybody to offer a warranty this way. That's the way I see it. Because if that part goes bad, I, it's it's not like a big deal to me because I'm gonna get paid to do the job twice. So I don't do a percentage markup. A lot of people, a lot of mechanic shops and mobile mechanics, they do a, a percentage markup. Like, oh, we get the part for this much, we mark it up 15% and that's the price or whatever the percentage is. A lot of times what, what happens though, they end up charging stupid prices for, for parts. If you just look at dealerships, look at the parts that the dealership sale sells, the, the prices are stupid. And, and that's how you get a job with a hundred dollars labor and a $900 part when it doesn't always really have to be that way. Okay, control arms, for example. A dealer a dealer installing a, an OEM control arm, it can be like 900 bucks for the control arm, or you can go aftermarket and get it for a couple hundred dollars or a hundred dollars or whatever, generally speaking. Uh, so that's what, I don't do price markups or percentage markups. I just sell it for whatever AutoZone is selling it for. Enough said. All right, now let's talk about trip fees. Just starting out, sometimes I wouldn't even charge a trip fee, uh, maybe charge like $25. Uh, if, if it's really far away, even if you're just starting out, charge like 50 bucks. Don't be afraid to charge a trip fee if somebody lives out in the middle of nowhere. They know that a lot of mechanic shops uh, won't go out there so it's not a big deal charge where you're worth uh, if you've been around a while you're well established uh, my trip fee starts at $50 that goes up to like a half hour away if they're uh, if they're like an hour away charge like $75 an hour if they're I start adding 50, uh, I start adding $25 for every 15 minutes further. Because if they're 15 minutes further, it's gonna be 15 minutes there, 15 minutes back added. So that's a half hour added on. That's another $25. And I think that's pretty reasonable. Um, other other fees could include uh, the asshole fee. If somebody's really rude on the phone or whatever, just hit them with, hit them with a number, you know, just hit them with a number. And if they want to pay it, that's cool. If not, that's better. Uh, after dark, if you're doing anything with the, with the sundown, I charge fifty dollars. Uh, if I'm cleaning up, if I'm cleaning up somebody else's mess, fifty dollars minimum, and it goes up from there, just depending on how big of a uh, circus you walk into. Our minimum call out is two hundred dollars. So I'm not telling you that you have to have your minimum call out at $200, but you should have a minimum call out. Have a number where you decide like, I'm not gonna go do any job. I'm not gonna get up and, and put my boots on 
for anything less than $100, $75, $150. Pick a number. Uh, if, okay, I said, I said that I don't install customer parts, but there are exceptions. Sometimes it's like a really easy, really easy job, easy money, okay? Uh, like, if somebody has a really easy job and they already have the parts and it's kind of a min uh, minimum liability sort of job where, hey, if, if the part goes bad, then whatever, I'll just add like $50 on because I'm not making any money off the parts. So add a little bit more. Sometimes you'll lose those jobs, but that's all right because I don't like doing jobs where the customer buys the part anyways. It's just, it's just not really a good situation. Labor, parts, trip fees, and then the miscellaneous fees that I covered there at the end. Let's take all, all these, let's take all these things that I talked about and we'll go through an example like if somebody calls me and says uh well first off i have all i have a link to all data uh on the home screen of my of my cell phone all data doesn't have a uh well i don't know maybe they have a <laughs> maybe they do have a, a cell phone app but i don't use it i just have the the website all data uh, a link to it an icon like on my cell phone. I click on that, it takes me to the home page, and then I can select the year, make, and model. So we'll just go to a recent, a recent car. We'll pick like a, a Chevy Silverado. So we we came, I picked a 2006 Chevy Silverado. Let's say that there's a water pump. So I look up water pump. Go to the parts and labor. It's 1.8 hours. So I'll go to my calculator. It's 1.8 times your labor fee. So my labor fee is 150. That equals 270. And then we'll add $50 for the trip fee. That's 320, and then, and then we'll, uh, and then I'll just tell the customer 325. I always round up and up to the nearest like 20, 25 dollar increment. Okay, so I've got the part pulled up here on on AutoZone's website for the water pump. It's 180. The way that I'll do it. I will give the customer the labor price and I'll just say plus parts and then I'll get them to agree to the labor price and then I will say I will say like okay I'll call and find out about the parts and then I'll call you back so in this case I it's 180 with some tax so I'll call them back and I'll say hey it's gonna the total bill is gonna be uh, let's say we'll just say 180 so 320 or 325 plus 180 this job so it it that comes out to 500 i'd probably charge like 525 to do a water pump on a 2006 chevy silverado with 5.3 so that's just a quick example well i hope that this video helped you guys if you have any questions go ahead and leave them in the comments below how do you guys charge? How do you guys decide what to charge the customer? Go ahead and let me know down in the comments below. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. Keep an eye up the hill, guys.